Hi, I'm Ben Barker here at Red Sox camp in Fort Myers. The Red Sox underwent a lot of change this offseason, but so did Major League Baseball. Commissioner Bud Selig restructured the playoffs, adding a second wildcard team to each league. I talked to Red Sox DH David Ortiz about his feelings on the new system. I don't know. I think, you know, it's good because you're going to give the opportunity to another team that play well. Boston Red Sox opening day is approaching fast. With the local nine heading down to Florida, former NASA reporter Heidi Watney returned to Boston to show her support for the Jimmy Fund. Okay, so first things first, tell us a little bit about how you got involved with this event and just what the event is overall. Well, it's Project Cupid. It's a charity date auction. So there's. It was a successful day for Team USA in the first round of the Fed Cup. Christina McHale and Serena Williams each won their matches, giving the United States a two to nothing advantage over Belarus. Today, can you talk a little bit about maybe some nerves heading into the match and then that great start that you had? Thank you. Yeah, um, this is. Uh my first time playing here in Worcester. So if Harvard really can change that around, it will happen on one of Boston's biggest stages. All Beanpot games are played right here at the TD Garden, home of the Celtics and the Bruins. The change in scenery means some added excitement for the players on the ice. The Red Sox have a help wanted sign posted in the middle of the infield. After trading Marco Scudero and Jed Lowry, manager Bobby Valentine is left without a starting shortstop. Mike Aviles has submitted his application and thinks he has what it takes to fill the hole at short. You know, I'm a very confident kid, and and I think I can, you know, uh, fill that void. You know, I pretty much come prepared to play every day and you know go about my business that way. You know, if if that's that's the case and I'm playing every day, then that's that's going to be I'm going to do the best job. Shortstop isn't the only position that the Red Sox need to fill. Cody Ross and Ryan Sweeney are battling it out to see who will be standing on the field right here at Fenway Park on Opening Day. I think we push each other and, uh, you know, I'm pretty good friends with Cody. He's a good dude and, um, you know, it's no like animosity towards each other. It's just, you know, we all know that it's a job and we know that we, everybody wants to be out there and play every day, but that just doesn't work out sometimes. I, I came in uh, to this camp prepared to play every day and, um, you know, I'm sure Sweeney did too. I mean, that's how you have to prepare yourself. You have to come in to camp ready to go because you never know what could happen. Guys like David Ortiz and Kevin Euclid already know what will happen. These sluggers will be taking the field regardless of their spring stats. But for Avila's, Sweeney, and Ross, the job is always on the line. Reporting for New England Nation, I'm Ben Barker. Harvard University has not won a Beanpot Championship in 19 years. Since then, the Crimson have had to watch crosstown rivals Boston College and Boston University pile up a combined 18 titles. In the midst of a season that has had its ups and downs, Harvard head coach Ted Donato is looking for the first round Beanpot matchup with BU to serve as a turning point. I know our guys are excited about it. Uh, you know, having had a chance to play BU last week, it's kind of stoked those fires a little bit uh, of, of looking forward to the Beanpot. So, uh, you know, it's been a while since we've, uh, we've had, you know, uh, you know, success in the Beanpot, and I think uh, it certainly would be a nice year to uh, change that around. If Harvard can change that around, it will happen on one of Boston's biggest stages. All Beanpot games are played right here at the TD Garden, home of the Celtics and the Bruins. The change in scenery means some added excitement for the players on the ice. Uh, everything uh, is exciting about the Beanpot tournament. I think just from the, from the day we get ready for it, we get like a little police escort kind of to the game. You kind of feel like it's like a professional game when you're going there. The whole the whole city is kind of behind it. I have I have great expectations uh, for this being pot, especially being in my senior year. Um, I hope that we could, you know, change what uh, what's been happening the past few years at Harvard and, and hopefully win. Harvard's chances of winning may begin on the bench. Coach Ted Donato is a Harvard grad who was on the ice when the Crimson won its ninth bean pot championship. That was exciting, and uh, you know, looking back now, um, you know, I really do enjoy. Uh, thinking about winning that bean pot, and I'd, I'd like nothing more for, for our players to be able to have that same memory. A memory that would be carved in Harvard history forever. Reporting for New England Nation, I'm Ben Barker. For the Atlanta Braves, the guys on the field are more than just teammates. I love them. I love them. No, this, this is family. Uh, no, I got asked last spring uh, you know, what was the most exciting thing I'm looking forward to about you know, the upcoming season. It was just seeing the family again. Like most families, the Braves have had their fair share of ups and downs. Last season, the team's downfall was the constant injuries, and it cost Atlanta a playoff spot. 
You, you work hard as you want to in the offseason, and uh, your season goes one way there, and, and you have all the confidence in the world. But once you, get, once you get an injury, you can't really control it. But the main concern now is to stay healthy. But uh, if I can stay healthy, I think everything will fall into place. But, you know, we had a great season last year. Unfortunately, we didn't like how it, like how it ended. It ended with the Braves losing the final five games of the season. It was a losing streak that allowed the St. Louis Cardinals to sneak into the playoffs and win the World Series. Still, the Braves are sticking with their strategy, keeping the game fun. Uh, when, you, when you're when you able to have fun, you're enjoying the, uh, the camaraderie of your teammates, you're enjoying uh, coming to the ballpark and hopefully winning that game. And uh, obviously that makes it a lot more fun and a lot more enjoyable. During the 90s and early 2000s, the Braves were one of the most dominant teams in all of baseball. During that time, Atlanta won 14 consecutive division titles. This year, the Braves look to start a brand new streak. Reporting with the Braves in Sarasota for WEBN, I'm Ben Barker. Hello and welcome to this New England Nation Sports Blast. I'm Ben Barker. It's one of the best rivalries in all of sports. Sunday, the Celtics traveled to Los Angeles to take on Kobe Bryant and the Lakers. The Celtics held a lead with under a minute to play, but the Lakers put the ball in the hands of Kobe Bryant, and he delivered. Andrew Bynum added the hook shot to make it a three-point game, but the Seas had a chance to tie. But Boston just couldn't get it to go, and the Lakers win a big one at home. The Celtics got some more bad news after the loss to the Lakers. After taking a routine screening, Boston center Chris Wilcox was diagnosed with a potential heart ailment. Wilcox will undergo multiple tests to determine the severity of his condition. There is no timetable set for his return to the court. Peyton Manning may be on the move. After being released by the Indianapolis Colts, Manning has been weighing his options for the future. Over the weekend, the quarterback was spotted meeting with team officials in Arizona and Denver. The Cardinals and Broncos appear to be the clear favorites to sign Manning, but he has not yet engaged in contract negotiations. We're all out of time for this New England Nation Sports Blast. I'm Ben Barker. Have a good night. After back-to-back -back wins over New York and Kansas City, the Pats flew into Philly looking to make it three in a row. The Dream Team Eagles would be without Michael Vick, so Coach Andy Reid looked to Vince Young to take down Tom Brady and the Patriots. Let's head to the highlight. Vince Young and Tom Brady, not the matchup we expected when the schedule came out, but a good one nonetheless early in the first. Vince Young says, let's see Michael Vick do this. The bomb downfield to Riley Cooper, who reels it in. He's marked down inside the five-yard line. LaShawn McCoy would punch it in on the very next play, and the Eagles go up early. Now down 10 0, the Patriots would respond on the ground. Ben Jarvis Green Ellis, the law firm, punishes it forward into the end zone for the score. Patriots cut the Eagle lead to three. Same score early in the second. Tom Brady's going to avoid the pressure here, and he calls for his man Dion Branch. And DB comes up with the catch, and he's going to make some guys miss. Rumbles all the way inside the five yard line, good for 60 of his 125 receiving yards. Green Ellis would once again end the drive with a touchdown he had two on the game. Now up 14 to nothing. Tom Brady wants Wes Welker. He's looking for him, and there he is. Wide open, Wes Welker makes the catch. That's a 41-yard score. That puts New England up big. At this point, this game has become a joke, but what's a Patriots victory without a little Gronk? It's nothing. So Brady's going to go laser beam over the middle to Rob Gronkowski. He's into the pay dirt. Another touchdown. That's Gronk's 11th of the season. Patriots take on the 0-11 Indianapolis Colts on Sunday as they look to make it four straight victories. The NBA and NHL are at the midway points, but do you smell that? That's right, spring is in the air and baseball is just around the corner. The sports world is going insane over the success of the Knicks' new young point guard, but is Jeremy a true winner? Former Red Sox captain and A-Rod face stuffer Jason Veritek has announced his retirement. Will the Red Sox select another capitan for the 2012 season? And the NHL trade deadline has come and gone. Find out who made the best last-minute acquisitions right here, right here, right here on Unsportsmanlike Conduct. Hey there, welcome back to another episode of Unsportsmanlike Conduct. I'm your host, Ben Barker. Now, last week, Marcus Garcia and the Red Scare pulled off the upset of the season when they defeated Ian Steele's Purple Panthers. Granted, it was the first episode of the season, but we'll still give Marky Mark some credit. All right, guys, next week, the Young Guard will look to exact revenge. Until then, check us out online at EIVTV.com for UC Extras, including interviews with today's winners and losers. As always, take it easy. Congratulations, gentlemen.